Now, what do we know about what works in instruction and practice? We have a fair number of studies that show the connection between what you're being taught and what you're applying in text with some repetition. So here's an example of a text that exemplifies the curriculum that I've just shown you here. Short A, short I, and we're introducing kids to the most frequent words. Okay, and what you see here is the words in black are ones that aren't part of that curriculum. The words in blue are words that um, are high frequency words that aren't part of the phonics curriculum or the letter sound curriculum. Okay, so we see a fair amount of application here. Now, again, and if you have to do something and, and don't hear this whole webinar, we don't know what percentage of the words need to actually fit what you're being taught, but a strong connection is really helpful. You shouldn't have to be trying to figure out a lot of words that you haven't had any guidance in before. We also want to give kids lots of opportunities to write with preformed letters, as well as obviously writing um, their own journals, their own stories. But preformed letters are a really great way. This is probably the best way to test out your hypothesis with regard to letters and sounds. And keep remembering when we do this, it's always a matter of when I've written it, I read it. And I can lengthen the sounds, okay? But I can begin seeing as I test my hypothesis how these letters affect the words that are made. Here's another example, you know, where we have whiteboards or chalkboards. We want to do a lot of writing in the interventions that we've done that have been highly successful. The writing is critical as well as a match to the books that kids are reading. A third thing is we want to have conversations with kids. We call these metalinguistics conversations, conversations about how language works. These are different, I'm going to suggest, than instruction. These can just pop up when things happen. Or when you're instructing something, for example, when I'm teaching kids about the word the, I don't have to pound it in, but you know, they're learning the word the, but I can say that the E has an unusual sound in the. It's different than the sound in some of our names like Emma and Eli. Okay? So talking to kids, raising points, like we would with our kids, um, while we're cooking in our own homes, okay? Um, we want to uncover for kids. We want to have conversations. We want to give them insight. We, this is another way to help them with components of long words. It's lunchtime, and we're going to go to the lunch room. Let's look at these words, and we're going to clap as we say the words, okay? So we're getting kids to think about language. <clears throat> 